Hello, my name is Trisha and welcome to our special summer online workshop all about the Stone Age and megalithic art. I am a museum educator here at the National Museum of Ireland Archaeology and I just want to thank you all for joining in on our live event and especially today as this week is Heritage Week so we're doing this event um, for Heritage Week as well. So today's workshop is all about the Stone Age. I am going to play a short pre-recorded tour of the museum that will tell you all about the Stone Age in Ireland, show you the museum's replica passage tomb and some other Stone Age artifacts that are on display at the museum. I will then come back live to answer any of your questions. We will mainly be looking at large decorated stones called megalithic stones. And I will show you how you can use our newly created activity sheet called megalithic rock art to learn more about them and decorate your own megalithic stone at home. So this activity sheet is available to download and print from the museum's website, and you can use be used as part of today's workshop. On this activity sheet on page three, um, there is an outline of a megalithic stone for you to decorate. If you have it already downloaded and printed, you can start decorating your megalithic stone as you're watching the tour. So look out for all the different megalithic stones and Stone Age artifacts that I'll be showing you on the tour to give you some ideas of how you can decorate your own one at home. And don't worry if you don't have it downloaded or printed or to hand, um, because after shortly after today, we will be making this video available on our YouTube channel and you can watch it back then at any time. So there's no uh, panic or rush or anything like that. So now we are going to play a short 10 minute tour about the Stone Age and show you some of the artifacts from the museum's collection that are on display. Please do stay tuned if you have any questions about the tour or the activity or the Stone Age or megalithic art or anything like that, please do um, use the chat feature and I'll be returning afterwards to show you a little bit more about our activity sheet and to answer your questions as well. So we'll see you all again shortly. I'm here in the Prehistoric Ireland exhibition at the museum which is artifacts on display from Stone Age and Bronze Age Ireland. The Stone Age went on for a very long time, so archaeologists have broken it up into three phases. The earliest is called the Paleolithic, but there is very little evidence for a Paleolithic in Ireland. The next is called the Mesolithic, which means the Middle Stone Age. This began around 8,000 BC or 10,000 years ago. During the Mesolithic, people were hunter-gatherers. This means that they hunted animals such as wild boar and gathered up food such as nuts, fruits and berries. They also fished. In order to hunt animals, they needed arrowheads and spears. They used a special type of stone called flint to make these. The next and the last phase is called the Neolithic, which means the New Stone Age. This began around 4,000 BC, around 6,000 years ago. At this time, people began to farm. They used axes to clear woodlands so they could grow crops and raise animals. They kept animals such as cattle, sheep and pig and used them for milk and for meat. They also grew crops such as wheat and barley for them to eat. At this time, there was a big change in how people sourced their food, from hunting and gathering to now farming. There is also a big change in the way that people buried and looked after their dead, and also their religion and beliefs. We are now going to take a look at our replica passage tomb to see what other changes took place in Neolithic Ireland. In the Mesolithic, the time just before the Neolithic, archaeologists have found very little evidence for people burying their dead. However, in the Neolithic, 
people started to build large tombs out of stones. These were called megalithic tombs. In Ireland, there are four main types of megalithic tombs. These are quartz tombs, portal tombs, wedge tombs, and passage tombs. This here is a replica of the entranceway into a passage tomb. We call them passage tombs because they have an entranceway followed by a corridor or a passage, hence passage tomb. At the end of the passage, there is a small chamber and this is called the central chamber. Sometimes there can be two or three smaller chambers around the central chamber. And it is in these small chambers that archaeologists find human remains. Most of the time, these are cremated, which means they were burnt before being placed inside of the tomb. The entire tomb is then covered with a mound of earth, clay and stone. Often, all around the outside of the tomb, there are large curb stones. The inside and outside of the tomb are made from large stones called megalithic stones. And it is on these stones that you will find decoration and carvings called megalithic art. Can you see some megalithic art around this tomb? Most of the megalithic art in Ireland is found in and around passage tombs. There are circles, spirals, zigzags and triangles. We don't know what these shapes may represent but it is thought that the circles and spirals may represent the sun, zigzags may represent water or waves, and some diamond shapes may represent eyes. People created this art using a sharp tool, possibly a piece of flint, and incised or carved the rock. Sometimes they also use a sharp tool and a hammer to make this decoration. One of the most famous passage tombs in Ireland is called Newgrange and it is in County Meath. This was built around 3200 BC, over 5000 years ago, and it is older than the pyramids in Egypt. At the entrance to Newgrange, over the doorway, there is a small box known as the light box. On the shortest day of the year, called the winter solstice, the rising sun shines through the light box and it lights up the chamber at Newgrange. There is a lot of megalithic art at Newgrange. Inside the tomb, there is a triple spiral known as the Triskel. All around the outside, there are large megalithic stones called curb stones. These are also all decorated with megalithic art. We know that passage tombs were very important to people in Neolithic Ireland. Because they are so big and large, it would have taken a huge amount of effort and people and organisation to be able to build such a structure. It is likely that the people at Newgrange came back to Newgrange every year to celebrate the winter solstice, very similar to how people still do this today. Another very important tomb in Ireland is called Nouth. This is located very closely to Newgrange and Nouth has the most megalithic art on a passage tomb in Ireland. There are over 300 stones decorated at Nouth. The passage tomb of Nouth was excavated by Professor George Ogan over 50 years ago. During the excavation, they found a very special artifact that we are now going to take a look at. This is called a mace head and it was found at the passage tomb at Nouth in County Meath. At Nouth, there are two passage tombs in the mound, one at the east and one at the west. This mace head was found in the eastern chamber. 
This is made from a piece of flint that came all the way from the islands of Orkney off the north coast of Scotland. This piece of flint has really nice colours of red, cream and brown and it may have been specially picked to make this mace head. Can you see the decoration on the mace head? There are spirals, diamonds and circles. Some people think that this was made to look like a human face. Can you see where the mouth is supposed to be? This is where the mace head was hafted, which means that a stick may have been attached to it so that it could have been used as a weapon. However, as, because it is so beautifully decorated, and would have taken a very, very long time to make something like this. It is unlikely that it was ever used as a weapon and it was probably owned and used by a very important person. At the museum, we have some other decorated megalithic stones on display. This one here comes from another passage tomb called La Cru. La Cru is also located in County Meath and it's not too far from Newgrange. There are three hills at Loch Crew and about 30, 30 passage tombs in this area. There is a lot of megalithic art found here, both inside the tombs and on the stones around them outside. What shapes and decorations can you see on this stone? I hope all the megalithic art that we have seen today has given you plenty ideas to decorate your own megalithic stone as part of our new activity sheet. Did you enjoy watching our tour all about Stone Age and megalithic stones? If you have any questions about the tour or the Stone Age, please do use the chat feature to submit your questions and I will answer them for you. <clears throat> Did you get a lot of ideas of how you would like to decorate your own megalithic stone? I have printed out the sheet and decorated just some megalithic stones to give you an idea of how you might like to decorate your own. And here at the bottom, I, we have put in just some of the different motifs that we would normally see and we would have seen these on some of the um, stones just here in the museum. So we did get a question in there at the very start about um, what can you use to decorate your stone? You can actually use whatever you like. Um, so these ones here, I actually used um, oil pastels. Um, so there, or you could use crayons as well. You can use markers. If you want, you can use paint or anything like that. And um, when I was decorating this one, um, I have some spirals up here in the corner, which we see loads of. And this one here is based off this spiral down here. And this type of spiral is known as a pelta spiral. Because you, can you see the way you have one and then it joins into the other one here then as well. And then I just joined it up with some other spirals beside it and put in some extra waves. We see this a lot on um, a lot of the, the art, the extra waves put in around the spirals. And down here in this little corner, I have a lot of diamond shapes. So again, we see a lot of these and I just put in some extra ones. And over here, this green section here, I have based this um, off these motifs down here. So these are actually called cup marks because it's like a little cup, a big U, and we see these a lot on different um, megalithic stones. And if you were to look it up, this is based on one of the curb stones at Newgrange. It's called curb stone number 52, because there is a lot of curb stones all around Newgrange. And it's actually exactly opposite to the entrance at Newgrange. Um, so that's what I did, but you, you don't have to do that. You can do whatever way that you want to. Um, so another one that I have here, um, I actually did this one in marker 
And at the center here, I have um, what's known as the triscal. So this is the triple spiral. So we have one spiral here, one here, and one here. And again, the most famous place where we see this is at Newgrange. And then I have also put in the little diamond shapes here at the side and some extra spirals um, in onto it there as well. So you can do whatever way, um, whatever way that you like, whatever um, ideas come to you, there's no trouble at all. Um, so you can just print that then off from the website. And like, if you think, is there, if there, is there any other motifs that you think that you could include that might be missing? Um, so if you come up with your own decoration as well, even better again. Um, and then I have another one back here. And this one I just kept with the zigzags and waves because again, we see a lot of those. And this one I did it with pastels. And um, the best thing about using pastels is if you get your finger and you kind of rub it, you can smudge it a little bit and it will give you a little bit more um, decoration on it as well. And you can blend the colors all you like as well. So lots, lots of different ideas there for you. So I hope that's some giving you, um, helped you along your own um, to make your own ones as well. Um, so we just have um, one question come in already. So do please keep them coming because I can answer them for you. And um, the question here is, are the passage tunes at Newgrange, Mouth um, and Delk all the same as each other? So that's a really, really good question. So they're actually all located very, very closely together, um, just a couple of kilometers between them. They're all passage tunes, which means that there's an entranceway, there's a long corridor, and then there's a passage at the end. And um, Newgrange is the only one that's aligned to the winter solstice, so the shortest day, and that's aligned to, the, sorry, the only one aligned to the sunrise of the winter solstice. And Doubt, we actually think, is aligned to the winter solstice sunset. So there is a really nice idea that maybe people in the past would have gone to Newgrange in the morning, would have celebrated the winter solstice where the sun uh, lit up the chamber there, and then may have traveled on to Douth and celebrated the sunset of the winter solstice as well. So they are actually quite close. Uh, I think it's just a couple of, couple of kilometers, so not meters, but a couple of kilometers, but you could walk it, um, what, it's probably what people did. Now, Nowth is a little bit different because it is a passage tomb. Um, but Nowth is very unique in that there's actually two passage tombs in the mound. You have one at the east side and one at the west side. And again, you've got a doorway, a very long corridor, and then a chamber. And what's interesting at Nowth is that at the end of one chamber, it's just the, the one single chamber. And at the end of the opposite, there's actually three little smaller chambers um, off the central one, which is what we see at Newgrange. And because these are at exactly east and west, um, it's thought that these may be um, lined up to the equinoxes. So the equinox, um, we have two every year, and it's the day where we have equal light and sunset, equal light and equal day. So then um, it's, it's hard to see for now, but the idea is that it may have the sunrise would have shined through the east and then the sunset shined through the west. Um, but it's not it's not completely confirmed around that. And then at Mouth as well, um, there are a number of small little satellite tombs all around the main mound as well. Um, and some of them were made and used in the Neolithic and some were actually made and used in the Bronze Age. Um, which is really, really interesting because that then tells us as archaeologists that uh, Newgrange, uh, sorry, now stayed a very, very important place um, for people for hundreds and thousands of years. And it's quite likely that similar to Newgrange and uh, many other past tombs that they would have returned um, to those sites um, e each year as well. So we see lots of activity. So it's never just Neolithic. We also see Bronze Age as well. 
Um, so if also um, on the activity sheet, um, we have another uh, really nice activity for you to do at home as well, if you want. Um, you can see I have some here in the background. And what you can do, uh, if you want to make some of your own megalithic stones at home, you can collect some rounded um, pebbles or stones at the beach. Now, you are allowed to do this, but we just do ask if you are collecting um, stones from the beach, only take what you need um, and don't, and please don't disturb any um, sea creatures or anything like that. Um, but it is okay um, to collect them. So the ones that I have here, um, a lot of, I, I picked the most rounded ones because I found that they were the easiest ones to paint. And when I brought them home, I gave them a good wash just to make sure that all, if there's any extra um, dirt or sand or anything like that on them, um, that that would, um, that just to wash all of that off to make it a little bit easier to, um, to, to paint them and then also um, I just let them dry and then I had some paint at home and I just just like in the activity sheet I just used what was there to give me some ideas of the different types um, of decoration that we see on megalithic art and I just decorated those stones as well so I actually can show you some of them um, up close here um, so this is actually one of my favourite ones. So when I was doing this one, um, I wanted it to look as much as I could like the, the entrance stone at Newgrange. So again, I have the, the Triscoll pattern up here. I have some spirals over here as well. And the little um, tri uh, diamond shape down here. And then also I've just done some of my own ones. Um, and I have a really, really nice wavy one that you might have spotted in the picture as well um, for you. So I just started with the blue <laughs> and then made my way up and have kind of a purpley colour on top. So a lot of the time when we do see, see megalithic art, we see the repeat of the zigzag um, onto the stones as well. So you can do something like that. Um, but just if you do, if you are collecting stones on the beach again, just, just take what you need. Um, don't take too many and just make sure that you don't disturb anything um, either. We'll just see if there's some more questions after coming in. And actually, the other thing, what's really, really nice about these is when you decorate them, um, what you can do, now I haven't done it, but you can just cover them over with a layer of PVA glue and it'll just give it a really, really nice shine. Um, so now maybe some of you, uh, if you're going back to school, you might want a little paperweight to keep down all your copies or your pages, um, or you could actually decorate your garden and put some really nice megalithic stones um, near your flowers or your shrubs or along your pathways or something like that. So that might be something that you might think of doing, um, of doing with them as well um, so we do just have another question after coming in there um, so can you tell us anything about um oh sorry i'm after losing it there about sanding stones we have one of oh you've won a one of your farm that's great um but as some sort of decoration but it's very weathered yeah so sanding stones um are usually more commonly found and would have been used in the bronze age but they're actually really really difficult to date um it would be quite unusual for them to be um for them to be very well decorated um but we do get some um some megalithic um kind of just stones on their own particularly from the Bronze Age more so than the Stone Age that are decorated. Um, so that's really, really interesting. If you want to find out more about your standing stone, if you go to the National Monument Service, um, the website is archaeology.ie. And if you click on their historic map viewer, um, you can actually click in and you can see the standing stone that's on your um, on, on your land as all um, all archaeological monuments are registered in Ireland and there will be more information about that specific one um, as well. So all you have to do, click on the historic map viewer, you can select your townland, so wherever it is that you are in Ireland, and it'll show you the monuments that are in the area. So I hope that um, 
that will help you on your quest and they actually might have a little bit more extra information um, about the type of decoration um, if it was ever studied in the past um, like unfortunately a lot there is um, mainly due to acid rain and things like that stones and the decoration do get damaged um, but we do um, archaeologists between the museum the national monument service and other archaeological companies as well um, try to keep track of of the decoration and if it changes so i hope i hope that has helped um we see now what else is coming in there thank you very much i'm very happy with them so hope, hopefully those rocks give you some ideas um how do you make your rocks really creative well that that is entirely up to you um whatever you'd like to do like i have another little one here and i made it like a little a little sun um so whatever whatever you think if you have glitter paint as well you could use some of that if you have like a glitter varnish it might shine it up a little bit more if you wanted you could add some like little gems or also um what you could use is if you're at the beach and you get some shells you can also decorate them with the shells and even paint the, sh the shells as well that's another idea um so where we have another question just there after coming in where can we find those megalithic rocks in Dublin now so if it's the ones that we were looking at um if it's the one that we were looking at on the tour so they are all um that's on display here at the museum it's the National Museum of Ireland Archaeology and we are located on Kildare Street if it is one of the passage tombs that you like to visit so Newgrange or an out, um, they are both looked after by the OPW and um, they can, as far as I'm aware, they can be visited. I don't know if you can go inside at the moment because of COVID, um, but they are open to visitors um, to go and to see. So I hope I hope that has answered your questions, um, your question for you there. And uh, if, if it's about collecting stones, any, any beach around Ireland, there's a lot and a lot of really nice beaches around Dublin down near Bray or, or Greystones or anywhere like that as well um so I hope I hope that has um that has helped you um so um I hope all of that has given you some plenty of ideas um and that you enjoyed um enjoy this workshop for Heritage Street and for submitting questions so we just have one quick question that came in there at the end um, where did the word megalithic come from? It's a really, really good question. So mega just means big and lithic is another word for stone. Um, so that's where we get me megalithic. It just means a very, very big stone. Um, so that's where that comes from. Um, so I hope that um, you do have lots of fun decorating your own stones at home. Um, again, don't forget you can download and print out the activity sheet to do at home. Um, and also, if you want to, if you are coming to the museum here, you can print it out at home and bring it and use it as part of your visit. At the moment, um, it is tickets uh, for the museum, so you can um, book online from museum.ie um, to come to the museum. So we do very much advise to book before coming as it is actually, it's quite busy at the moment, um, which is great to see as well. So you can use the sheet um, here and do remember as well that the museum is free as well as um, our activity sheet to use um, and all the other resources from our website. Um, if you want to learn even more about the Stone Age, um, we have also created a Stone Age word search and this is available from the museum website again. Um, this along with a range of other activities are available from the, uh, the museum at home section from Engage and Learn from the museum website. So you can get resources for our site here at Archaeology and there's also resources for our other three sites. At, uh, from natural history, um, decorative arts and uh, military history and folklife. So there's loads for you there to engage with online. 
Um, before we finish up, I just want to thank everyone for joining in uh, today's event. I want to thank all my colleagues in the education department, particularly Emma and Grace, for all their support, their support for today's workshop. Um, and a very special thank you to Gavin in IT who helped with the recording and the editing of the video as well. And of course, our marketing department for promoting today's um, event as well. And um, do note that if, if you enjoyed this workshop, um, please do keep an eye on the museum's website, um, on our Twitter, our Facebook, our Instagram for any upcoming events um, that we will be doing. And we will also be posting this video onto the museum's YouTube channel very, very shortly as well. So you can watch put back at any stage um, that you like as well. Um, and if you like, if you felt very inspired by today, please do let us know how you got on. You can send us pictures of your megalithic rock art um, to educationarc.museum.ie. You can post onto our Twitter using our handle NM Ireland, or you can also post on our Facebook page as well. Um, so thanks again very much for joining in today. And hopefully we will see you all at the museum again very, very soon. Thank you.